Hello, welcome to another video uh, demonstration by Ozen Engineering uh, where we love to do uh, analysis using ANSYS products. In this demonstration, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, calculation uh, joule of joule heating uh, due to the traces in a PCB. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to start with an existing model uh, that uh, that was actually presented uh, previously in YouTube. Uh, you may find that video. Uh, it is titled PCB Modeling with uh, ANSYS Ice Pack. So this is, in a sense, continuation of that model where we have a, a PCB board and uh, where we uh, imported traces on our PCB board. Uh, this board also has, uh, you know, some components uh, with heat loads on it. And, uh, you know, this, this is kind of uh, what, is, what it looks like. And again, uh, the goal of this uh, video is to uh, compute heating capacity uh, due to uh, joule or trace heating. So, uh, you know, let's double click on our board outline. Under geometry, uh, we already uh, imported our ECAD file. What we would like to do is now go under model trace heating by clicking the edit button, which is going to uh, bring up this new window. And uh, we'd like to work on the layer called INT1-3. So here, uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing a set of uh, different traces. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, cre to create a solid trace uh, for, for the trace that is named A3, A3V3. So let me click on that. So this will be the trace of interest. What I would like to do is uh, tighten these uh, trace limits uh, in order to, uh, you know, ignore unnecessary fine details. So I'm going to make the maximum angle 135 and the minimum length 1 millimeter. And then let's hit create solid trace. And we're going to hit done. So once we hit the create button, uh, you'll notice that, that there's a new object here, a, a new block b based on that uh, particular layer. So let me double click on this layer, and uh, but you know, uh, so we can edit it. Before that, let's you know make make it more visible. So I'm going to go under display options, shading, and I'll convert it to. And here uh, now we see, you know, the uh, solid block created for this particular trace. So, under geometry, uh, now we see this polygon with all these vertices around 184 vertices so that that's good to confirm then let's go to the properties window and under here uh, we see that you know that there's joule heating option turned on we want to click edit and then enter some values like these values do make sense. So now that we're comfortable with these numbers, let's hit done and done. And then uh, we'd like to now generate uh, two sources. So for this purpose, let's go to create sources button right here, 
click on it and then uh, we can make the changes on the bottom right hand side so for source one I'm going to enter these numbers apply so that's our source number one and then let's add another source apply so now we can see our two sources Let, let's hide our here so we have one source here and one source there on, on the two extremes of the of our uh, dual heating area so here at the sources uh, we're, we're going to apply uh, a dual heating uh, in terms of a current voltage pair using our two sources. So let's go apply uh, the boundary conditions. So we go to source one, let's pick properties. And what we'd like to do is uh, we're gonna turn on voltage current source and we'd like to put 25 amps here update and done let's go to our source 2 go to properties this will be defined by voltage with 0 watts so update and done next step is uh, to generate the mesh uh, before we generate the mesh what we want to do is uh, create a uh, non-conformal assembly for the trace and um, since we're performing a dual heating calculation it is necessary to have high or medium mesh quality so we're going to select source one source two and our and our uh, trace block and then do a right click we'll say create assembly so now these three components do lie in an assembly called assembly.2 let's double click on it and uh, go to the meshing tab we're gonna select the option mesh separately uh, we're gonna define some slack settings find some maximum element size for this particular assembly and, and related minimum gaps select set uniform mesh parameters and let's enable 2D level meshing let's press done so now we want to generate our mesh where all right uh, let's also change these minimum gap values just slightly And 
then let's hit the generate button so this is going to go ahead and generate the mesh for us and as you can see it's uh, working on it and it's already done around 350,000 our face alignment is good let's check our skewness that that's also over 2% so that's good uh, if you like we can you know display the mesh at different locations maybe you know make a cut plane through the X domain where we can see really fine mesh you know in the X direction where we have the traces okay so we can close this and uh, next step is you know let's make sure our boundary conditions are correct so let's check our cabinet uh, we can look at the opening boundary conditions okay we have the connection flow so I can hit cancel uh, cancel uh, let's go back up to our problem setup basic parameters And uh, you know we're gonna solve for flow temperature. Radiation is off. We have zero equation turbulence, so that's good. We can hit accept. Let's go to solution settings, basic settings. So flow convergence is three orders of magnitude. Let's put 200 iterations and put the joule heating to eight orders of magnitude. And we can now hit accept let's go to our advanced settings make sure you know we want we have the right method and again since uh, temperature is critical we want to switch it to type F and put tighter termination criterion and residual criterion and let's uh, switch our stabilization method to BCG stab for temperature and also for joule heating and confirm that precision is doubled and we can hit accept so now uh, what we can do is uh, we can start the solution we're gonna go ahead and click the run solution button and then just hit start solution and let's uh, you know give the model uh, time to be solved uh, using ANSYS fluid so now uh, looks like fluid ran completed it reached convergence around 110 15 iterations uh, looks like it sent the information back to ice pack. Let's hit done. Close this window. And uh, we can already see some temperatures. Uh, so let's uh, hide this uh, cut. Uh, you know, let's look at our uh, trace. So we want to go post object face. Let's select our trace layer hit accept and then uh, what we want to do is again look at the temperature by clicking parameters so let's select this object and then hit apply so this is uh, what our temperature field looks like for our uh, joule heat due to the joule heating we can see you know the higher and lower regions also you know remember that uh, these are with the uh, you know with the convecting boundary conditions
next uh, we may want to look at the electric potential so from our list let's select that hit apply and this is uh, what our electric potential solution looks like and this uh, actually concludes our presentation where uh, we went through uh, you know modeling a, a joule trace heating problem on our PCB using ANSYS ice pack thank you for your interest have a great day